Hello and welcome my partners in crime and thank you for joining me again today, I really appreciate it. Um, now listen, this is an update case, hopefully it'll be the final one on this, because we've done the whole case on this, then we've done an update case because this man died, and then, just after he died, DNA evidence was found. Now, and it's really important that I think that we finish and finalise this case one way or the other, and um, <laughs> I don't even think that you can say it it can be finalised. And so that's why I want to sort of go over a few bits with this case. So listen, this is the Clydick murder case, again, now, where they have now found DNA evidence a few weeks ago, um, I think a couple of, about a month ago, really. And I, I told my members and stuff, you know, in my members' lounge that I was going to do this case because it was, uh, you know, important to, to do it. And... Um, but also there's so much around this case that even though now they've come out with DNA, people still don't believe it. And I'm not going to say one way or another, really. I'm going to tell you maybe why people don't believe it and why his family don't believe it. His family have never believed that he had done these murders and he has never, and he could have been out of prison quite a long time ago actually, but um, would probably he would never admit it. Now there's a couple of reasons why you wouldn't admit a murder like this because this is multiple murder. This took out three generations of the same family. There was two children involved here. These were absolutely, this was such a violent, violent attack, really, that you could understand, I suppose, why someone wouldn't admit it. Especially when you have a family that has supported you your whole time through this. There's other reasons, not only because of the support of their family, but where this man had said he was been set up by police. And, um, and so this sort of opened up this case right from early on to where it may never have had any conclusion, even though he was found guilty twice in a court of law. But I, I don't think this is ever going to find um, a, a final conclusion to anything because of what went on previously and then within the investigation <clears throat> I just don't think this is ever going to stop but I like to bring you the latest updates on these cases for you to make up your own mind. Now as I've said this was the worst mass murder in South Wales criminal history uh, and it was terribly um, a, a, a terrible violent attack on these three generations of this family it really was right it really was so you know no one here wants anyone to get away with murder and no one wants to you know put out there that this man may be innocent when he may not have been but i've always said in all these cases when we do these cases we are not mind readers <clears throat> you don't know you don't know in the circumstances, even when we find DNA, you think, right, that's it, I did. I, as soon as I read it, I thought, well, that's it, he's, he's, he's done for. You know, that was it. The DNA is there and, and this is it. But it's not until you really look below the surface of this crime that there is still questions. And this family is still saying, this DNA wasn't there at the time when these murders took place. Now... Is it far-fetched? Yes, it is, right? Because usually when I see DNA evidence and I believe in DNA evidence because of the weight it holds as evidence, you can't get really better than that. But when though that is put into question from the early investigation or the crime scene or who was at the crime scene and what happened in this investigation and who are the other possible suspects were in this you know in this investigation it's not so clear cut as that so on the night so this crime was committed on or between the 26th and the 27th of june 1999 so you can say at that point yes there was dna of course there was but not the way we have it today today as i keep saying with a lot of criminals out there, you know, the advances in DNA now are you need the most minute, minute piece of it to be caught. They can now work with very, very small samples of it. So, you know, 
that that's one of the things I want to you know reiterate here is that you it, DNA really means something but as I said not in all cases but anyway so this builder David Morris um, he was handed a life sentence for killing Mandy 34 and her family now on that night you had Doris um, now she was 80 I think at the time and she was bedridden and she was asleep in bed and Mandy and the children had gone out hadn't they so they know now that the assailant entered the home he beat Doris, this invalid bedridden lady in her 80s, um, so badly onto the, on her face that she was unrecognisable. Right, so this is the first attack. Now as he was hitting, or as someone was hitting and hitting her with this pole, and it was like a resin sort of pole, it looked like metal but it wasn't, it wasn't, but it was hard you know, um, very, and whoever hit this woman across the face like this so much with this pole, you know, meant to kill her that it would have been an awful death for her. As he was swinging it up, it hit the light up there and took the lights out. So, of course, all the lights went in the house, didn't it? So they had to come down the stairs, change all the circuit, you know, the, um, the circuit board to make the lights work. But then what they did then... They sat and waited in that house, didn't they, for Mandy and the two children to come back. So you've murdered someone upstairs. Now listen, this isn't a house on acreage on its own. This house, this has got neighbours. You know, it's end of terrace. It's got neighbours. You know, it's a street. It's, it's not rural at all. No one heard anything. No one heard anything. But he's lying in wait. So you've got a dead woman upstairs. We know she died first because of forensics and stuff like that. So this man lies in wait, all right, for these to come in. Now that's why we know the target was Mandy Powell, because of that. So he's got this weapon, this weapon means something because there was um, DNA, why uh, chromosomes found on that right early on, on in 1999, that they couldn't match that DNA to anyone, which is an important fact here, isn't it really? So. When Mandy's come in the house, it looks like then he's attacked, or he's hidden, I think, for a while because the kids have gone upstairs. And he's attacked Mandy, and he's attacked the kids. The kids, I think, were killed first, then Mandy was killed later. Now, um, I got it wrong before because I said it was a male's watch that was placed on her arm. It wasn't, it was a woman's watch with male DNA on it, unknown male DNA on that watch, again these Y chromosomes, you know, to an unrelated person found on this watch. And the watch was given by the girlfriend, because she had a girlfriend, so she was bisexual um, as well. So this is all relevant here. So the watch is here. Then we found out that he's um, bathed her and also then put, um, inserted things inside her, like sexual objects inside her and posed her body in such a way how it was left. One of the children was that badly beaten that her brain had literally been split open. And there was brain matter around. So this case is an important case when it comes down to who you believe. Now, whether you believe this DNA they found now did belong to David Morris and the life sentence that he got was deserved, that's it. That's what it proves, isn't it, on the surface? Or do you believe that, like many, many, many people believe, that he didn't do it and he was set up? Now, the reason they believe he was set up because of Mandy Powell's girlfriend. Now, this is where a bit of the controversy starts, I think, because you have Mandy Powell, with, who was bisexual, who was also seeing um, a lady, and that was her girlfriend on and off girlfriend, and I say on and off because there was issues even there with that. Now, the girlfriend was married to a police officer at the time in this area. Also, the, her husband's brother was the lead detective on this case, and he was the first one that went into this property, and he did not secure the scene properly. He actually lost his notebook and stuff like that, didn't he? 
So there was a lot of controversy. He also then went back to the police station. This is the, bro the brother. I never said to anyone there had been a serious incident that someone, you know, four members of the same family, like Doris Dawson, 80, beaten to death so she's unrecognisable. Mandy Powell, beaten, everything gone on. The two children, beaten. You know, eight and ten, they were. Then you go back to your police station and you're meant to be the lead detective on this case. You haven't secured the crime scene. You've lost your notebook for that night saying about everything and where you've been and what you've been doing. You've then, as you've gone back to this police station, you've not made or what they call raised this to a higher level of investigation. Now this is where the issues with this case then become wide open because how then can this case ever be safe, really? You know, without people saying this isn't right because it wasn't right. Now, for some reason or another, now these people were arrested, you know, and um, I think they, they were charged actually, but nothing happened to them because of uh, inconclusive evidence. There was no evidence about it. So um, that was them, they was dismissed out of court. And then three years later is when Di Morris were, then was arrested. Now, the reason Di Morris was arrested at that point three years later is because he had occasionally had casual sex with Mandy Powell. She was bisexual. It happens. You know, people have relationships with many different people. Mandy Powell did. And they are saying that Di Morris or, or David Morris was pissed off because she didn't want to see him anymore. That's what they were saying. And he had a gold chain necklace and that gold chain was found in the property at that night. Now he says that three days before that he had met Mandy Powell in the town centre. His chain had already broken, he was going to get it fixed, but he'd met Mandy Powell and she, you know, they'd spoke about going back to have some casual sex to her house and that's what he did and that's where the chain must have come off and he, they left it. But the chain was there, again with DNA on it as well, but also this fibreglass sort of um, rod, piece of rod, you know, that, that um, was used as a murder weapon, also had male DNA on it, um, that um, in them days that they could not find anyone that matched the, that DNA. Now, it's surprising that even though we know they had that DNA in them days and they couldn't find the match, that's not what they got checked this time for DNA. What they got checked was was the sock that they say the assailant used, the killer used in the attack um, when he was hitting and, and bludgeoning these people to death. And it was in on that that they found um, tr tiny traces of um, David Morris's DNA. So I don't know what's happened to the other items, but as I've said before, you know, items of DNA to get tested are very, very expensive to do and maybe they thought well this is the best one we've got because whoever used the glove would have put I think the last time they tested the glove they tested the outside most sensible people would have tested the inside certain things because the, you know your cells and that everything drop off this then I think we've had so much issue haven't we now with this uh you know the Welsh police um here in in Clyditch area Swansea area that um the families and everyone else wanted then the DNA and this case to be looked at um, away from them. So listen, that's what they did. They sent the DNA out to a separate you know, laboratory for testing and that's what it came back on. Now, the other thing about the controversy on this case is because when we go back to the girlfriend of Mandy Powell, there was issues there with her because I don't know what Mandy Powell was doing when she was seeing her, they had a really, you know, this girl was in love with her. She loved her. Mandy was a nurse, trained nurse, um, but she told the girlfriend that she had cancer and got the girlfriend to drop her off at the hospital for treatment, even though it was untrue. So my question is, who else was Mandy seeing? You know, why lie? Why lie about that? It's, it, that's sort of never been really looked into why she lied and where she was going. If you're being dropped off at a hospital and you're saying you're having treatment for cancer, but you're not, 
you know, you're then being deceitful for some reason, aren't you? And I don't think it's just, it could have been, couldn't it, that Mandy may have thought if she, I tell her she's got, you know, I've got cancer, she's going to leave her husband and come with me. But anyway, there was a big blow up row in the end when uh, the girlfriend found out about it. And you can't blame her for that. And I think when we look at now the husband of this girlfriend who was a police officer, you know, it's, it's a, for a man to have, for your wife to leave or for anyone, you know, for their partner to leave them or have an affair, uh, it's, it's really heartbreaking for that person. They feel really let down, don't they? If you're a police officer and your wife is not just having an affair, but she's having a homosexual affair with someone. I think he would be quite pissed off. And I think that's what, at first, that the police and stuff or people thought that was, may have been a reason why Mandy was killed by them because of his anger and aggression towards her because of this, um, you know, um, affair, really. But as I said, there's no proof on that. And do we think the brother of this police officer knew that? And he was also the lead investigator, wasn't he? Detective who came across this crime there and then. Did he think when he went, because you've got to think what's going through his mind, his twin brother or his brother, uh, he knows all this is going on. Although he says he didn't know. He said, actually, none of them said, oh, I didn't know about the affair. It's actually bullshit. They did know about the affair. But anyway, you know, did the brother, the police officer, when he turned up to Mantis' property that night, you know, because of whoever the assailant had not just beaten him to death, they set it alight and everything out. And as the bodies were being taken out, so the crime scene was damaged to the that and the other, and the bodies were being taken out, and this man went in. Did he think... And, you know, did my brother do this? You don't know, do you? He could have thought that. He could have thought, what am I going to do? This man may not have had anything to do with it at all. Neither of them may have not had anything to do with it. But with your brother, and you know that, that something's going on here, and this is so close to you in this area, I mean, it's close to this man, he should never have been on this case anyway. It's too close for him to have been investigating such a crime. Um, with that, them links to the, to this girl and this family. Did he think, hmm, you know, maybe I better try and cover it up? But it may not have been any of them. Do you see what I mean? Or it could have been all of them. Or it could have been none. Or it could have been Di Morris now, because now the DNA has been found. Or it could have been somebody else that Mandy Powell was seeing at that time. Now, I'll tell you why this other issues around this case which doesn't make it so simple really now they had the police had these memos right which were someone had rung up or, or wrote in and said about this the first bombshell development it says centers on this critical memo of the police on this home's computer system now the document revealed that the police um, informant told detectives within hours of the crime now this is what this is evidence, I'll show you it, um, that both Mandy and her family and her family had been threatened before the murder because of her gay affair and that those threats were made by Sergeant Stephen Lewis, the same police officer who was later arrested. Right, so that's one part of it. Now again, this investigation found that significant new evidence documenting, showing this um, unknown male DNA all over the scene. All over the scene and on the murder weapon. Now, basic levels as it, of DNA were done at the time because that's all they could really do then. And they, there were some items that did bore the traces of cells from someone with a male uh, Y chromosome, presumably the murderer. But there was male DNA all over this place, even though this place had been burnt because this person set fires to the everywhere, the main being the kitchen, I'll show you pictures of that. But also then you have the emergency services, the fire brigade, 
putting water on it and everything else. So a lot of evidence would have been lost. Now, so we have different things and this is why. Why I don't think anybody, really, who feels that David Morris or Di Morris had nothing to do with this crime and was set up still continues to think that because there was too much going on before the murder, during the murder, at the murder scene and after to really, I don't know how ever, this became a safe case anyway. So listen, I don't know what you think, let me know what you think, but what we can't forget here is that this is the murder, right, of three generations of the same family. So you had Mandy Powell, her two daughters, Katie and Emily, and her mother, Doris Dawson, that were all killed. They were all killed, and um, in a terrible, terrible way in 1999. Someone has got to be accountable for this crime. Now, this latest DNA, I think this is also what's done it. Um, to, Because there's still no conclusion, really, because they've said in a way, right, because a lot of people, a lot of you have... Um, emailed me about this, texted me about this, commented on this, we've, we've talked about this a lot behind the scenes. But what it comes down to, they found traces of DNA, right, minute traces of DNA, which matched to Di Morris. Now what the, what the um, scientists are saying um, are, yes, it is his DNA, small traces of it, but what they couldn't say is were they placed there on that night of that murder? They can't, no one can 100% say that. And the reason why no one wants to really 100% say that this DNA, he is the murderer and that's what it come from. This and they're saying it's highly unlikely that he wasn't him, but they can't be 100% sure he, he put it there on that night. Right, but it's highly, it's more than likely that he did, but it's not 100%. Because of all the controversy before, how the crime scene was left unmanaged, unattended. You know, that's what done it. How you have a police officer, the girlfriend, the girlfriend's husband, the, you know, the girlfriend's husband's brother, all police officers or ex-police officers or, you know, one of the police officers, wasn't he, was the one that investigated this crime scene. He should have set this crime scene up on that day, the minute he got in there and they realised, once them paramedics have realised that these people had been murdered, terribly murdered, that crime scene should have been shut down, sealed, secured. And then we may have had a chance of having an outcome in this case. Now listen, many of you already believe that David Morris did this crime and you've been saying it all along. Many of you don't. Many of you think he'd been set up and, and, and stuff. Many of you do. Di Morris had a funeral only a few weeks ago. Many, many hundreds of people went to that funeral, even after knowing about this DNA evidence because of the controversy around this case. But what remains here is that people have died a terrible death. And so, as I've said before, for me, this is the end of this case for me because where is it to go now? Di Morris has died. They finally released out that his DNA was found at the scene. But really, it's not about what I think, is it? I'd like to know what you think. Do you think, by listening to this and the other updates and the main case in this, that Di Morris murdered four people, three generations of their own family? Do you believe he did it? Do you believe that the DNA, yes, we're not saying the DNA is not his, no one is saying that. The, the um, scientists are saying, absolutely, and this was taken out of New South Wales, police is charged and put with somebody else, an independent, to look at this. But what they can't say is, they can't guarantee, nor can anybody guarantee at this point, that David Morris, that that DNA 
was put on that sock, that bloody sock, on that night. They just can't. And so that's what continues to leave this case wide open. So listen, thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this um, case. It's, it's just, this case just goes on, but this is what happens when you have an early investigation that's not managed right at all. And when you have suspects that are police officers and everything else that have done behavior that draw suspicion to them. That's what you have uh, in these cases. So, you know, was the jury right? Was they not? I'll leave that up to you. So, you know what to do. You can follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. You can catch us up on Let's Have a Chat About Murder. Um, the next case I must talk about very quickly is the next case is coming up. It's the case of um, April Fab. Now, this part, case one of 20 of our missing campaign that we're doing through the month of December. So, 20 cases of missing people to highlight these cases and others in the area of missing people and children um, from all over the place really. It's about awareness isn't it? So we know Christmas is difficult for many people for many different ways, in, in many different ways. Um, you know whether it's financial, whatever. But when you are missing a loved one and you have not had a sign from them, you haven't heard from them, they have gone literally without a trace. Christmas is a terrible time of year when you're waiting for someone to come home. So, thank you for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.